Have you ever pondered over how vanity and self-obsession can lead us to unforeseen circumstances? Imagine a hot summer night in a modest dwelling. A homeopathic doctor, fresh from a meal outside, settles down to read. As he flips through the pages, his eyes are drawn away by his own reflection in the mirror. His mind starts wondering, envisioning a future filled with prosperity, respect, and perhaps a beautiful companion by his side. As he sits there, lost in his reverie, he's blissfully unaware of the peculiar encounter that awaits him. An encounter that's about to shatter his self-admiration and replace it with a profound realization. This is not just a story of a man and a mirror, but a narrative that holds a mirror to each one of us, reflecting our own vanity and ego. Little did he know, his evening of self-reflection was about to take a wild turn. So, let's embark on this journey together, shall we? As the doctor was lost in thoughts of his future, an unexpected visitor slithered into the scene. Quite abruptly, the tranquil silence of the room was broken. A creature, silent and stealthy, had descended from the ceiling, landing with a soft thud on the doctor's arm. It was a snake, a creature known for its lethal potential and uncanny silence. This was no ordinary encounter. The doctor, engrossed in his dreams of a prosperous future and a loving wife, was jolted back to reality. His pulse quickened and a cold sweat broke out on his forehead. The snake, however, seemed undeterred by the doctor's discomfort. Its attention was fixated on the mirror, captivated by its own reflection. The doctor watched, frozen in fear as the snake slithered onto his table, its scales glistening in the dim light. The snake was closer now its forked tongue flicking in and out, tasting the air. It was a surreal scene, a man and a snake, both entranced by their reflections in the mirror. In the face of danger, the doctor had no time to admire his own reflection. His thoughts were no longer filled with dreams of marriage or materialistic aspirations. Instead, they were consumed by the immediate threat that had presented itself. His heart pounded in his chest, each beat echoing the seconds that ticked by in the silence of the room. The doctor, paralyzed by fear, dared not move. His breath came in shallow gasps, each one quieter than the last as he tried not to draw attention to himself. He understood that any sudden movement could provoke the snake, transforming this silent encounter into a deadly confrontation. But in this moment of crisis, the doctor's vanity was forgotten. His mirror, which once reflected his dreams and aspirations, now held a deadly serpent, entranced by its own image. His life hung in the balance, suspended between the snake's fascination with its reflection and the potential for a lethal attack. In the face of danger, the doctor remained motionless, his vanity temporarily forgotten. The snake, seemingly oblivious to the doctor's panic, found something far more interesting. This creature, known for its stealth and danger, found itself in a peculiar situation. The snake, having slithered onto the doctor's arm, discovered something captivating in the room. No, it wasn't the doctor frozen in fear. It was the mirror. Just as the doctor had been earlier, the snake was now entranced by its own reflection. The mirror, an object of vanity for humans, had now ensnared the fascination of this reptile. It was a spectacle of irony where the snake, a symbol of danger and fear, was just as captivated by its image as the doctor had been by his own. The doctor, still paralyzed, watched the snake's eyes fixed on the mirror. The creature seemed to be in a trance, its gaze locked onto the reflection of its own form. This was not the typical behavior one might expect from a snake. It was a moment of vanity, a moment where the snake was not a predator, but a creature admiring its own beauty. The parallels were striking. The doctor, a learned man, had been admiring his reflection, contemplating his future, and now the snake, a creature of instinct, was doing the same. Both were caught in the act of self-admiration, their vanity on full display. The doctor could do nothing but watch as the snake, entranced, continued to stare at its own image. He could not help but draw parallels between his own behavior and that of the snake. The mirror had served as a tool of vanity for both of them, a symbol of their self-obsession. In this moment of suspense, the doctor, the snake and the mirror were all intertwined in a dance of vanity. It was a poignant reminder of the thin line between self-love and self-obsession, a line that both the doctor and the snake had crossed. The doctor watched, frozen, as the snake admired its reflection, much like he had done himself. 
Caught in this bizarre spectacle, the doctor was forced to confront his mortality. Here he was, a man of medicine, a healer, in a standoff with a creature that could so easily bring about his end. The irony of it all hung in the air, almost as palpable as the fear that gripped him. His heart pounded in his chest, each beat a reminder of the life that flowed within him, a life that could be extinguished in a matter of moments. He was acutely aware of the snake's presence, its cold scaly body wrapped around his arm, its gaze locked onto its own reflection in the mirror. He could feel its movements, each muscle contraction and release sending waves of terror through him. The doctor knew he needed to remain still. Any sudden movement could provoke the snake, causing it to strike. He was at the mercy of a creature that had been demonized in countless myths and stories. Yet here it was, seemingly more interested in its own reflection than in his potential as prey. His mind raced, thoughts swirling in a chaotic dance. He pondered over the fragility of life, the ease with which it could be snuffed out. He thought about his dreams, his aspirations, the future he had been so eagerly contemplating just moments ago. How quickly it could all be taken away. The doctor was caught in a strange dance with death. His fate was intertwined with that of the snake, a creature as fascinating as it was terrifying. He realized then that life was nothing more than a series of moments, each one as unpredictable as the next. And then, just as suddenly as it had appeared, the snake uncoiled itself from his arm and slithered away, leaving the doctor in a state of shock and relief. The encounter had been a brush with death, a reminder of the transient nature of life. As the snake eventually slithered away, the doctor was left alone with his thoughts. In the silence of the night, the doctor was left to contemplate the strange encounter. As the echo of the slithering snake faded away into the darkness, the doctor found himself in the company of his thoughts and his reflection, now devoid of its earlier vanity. The unexpected visitor had left, but its silent message remained. It was a night like no other, a night that served as a mirror to the doctor's soul, revealing to him the fine line between self-love and self-obsession. As he sat there, in the tranquility of the night, the doctor began to reflect on the incident. He pondered over the snake's fascination with its own reflection, an act that was eerily similar to his own behavior just moments before the snake's arrival. But was it not the same vanity that he had seen in his own eyes mirrored in the snake's gaze? This realization struck him like a bolt of lightning, illuminating his mind with a newfound understanding. The vanity he had indulged in, the dreams of a prosperous future and the thoughts of marriage all seemed trivial when faced with the immediate threat of death. The snake, entranced by its own reflection, had served as a stark reminder of his own narcissism, one that he had been oblivious to until that moment. This humbling encounter made the doctor realize the folly of his vanity. His self-obsession, just like the snake's, could have led him down a dangerous path. The snake, in its vanity, could have attacked its own reflection, mistaking it for a rival. Similarly, the doctor's obsession with his future prospects could have blinded him to the present, making him vulnerable to life's unexpected twists and turns. The doctor understood that this incident was not a mere coincidence, but a lesson in humility, a wake-up call from fate. He realized that he had been living in a bubble of self-admiration, oblivious to the realities of life. His dreams of a prosperous future had made him forget the unpredictability of life, the fact that in a split second everything could change. In the cold light of reality, the doctor recognized his vanity for what it truly was, a veil that had been blinding him from the truth. The snake in its simplicity had taught him a lesson more profound than any he had learned before. It taught him to appreciate the present, to value life, and to understand the futility of vanity. The strange encounter had served as a mirror, reflecting the doctor's flaws and teaching him to see beyond his self-obsession. It was a lesson learned in the silence of the night, a lesson of humility and the impermanence of life. The doctor had faced death and had come out of it wiser, humbler, and more in tune with the realities of life. In the face of death, the doctor learned a valuable lesson about vanity, self-obsession, and the unexpected twists of fate. His encounter with the snake was a testament to the unpredictability of life, reminding us all that in the grand scheme of things, we are but mere spectators in the theater of existence.